Doing drama with James Nesbitt tonight on ITV1 at 9. Right now, though, an exclusive with Trevor MacDonald. Tonight, Kilroy on the ropes. I'd come back from burying my mother. I had a funeral on Wednesday. We came back thinking we'd had a very difficult, stressful day. We could now relax. And the roof fell in. Head to head as he faces his greatest crisis. You say, should we admire them for being suicide bombers, limb amputators, repressors of women? Of course. We, we should not admire people. You don't think that in one ha sweeping ha stroke... Trevor, hang on. Trevor, hang on. And has this fish had its chips? Well, I don't eat farm salmon. I don't let my family eat farm salmon. And I don't let my customers eat farm salmon. Is it safe for your family to eat salmon? Good evening. This morning, one of our best-loved talk show hosts, Robert Kilroy Silk, would normally have been broadcasting his long-running programme on BBC One. Instead, he finds himself at the centre of a massive race row. His show has been pulled off the air and his career is in crisis. Tonight, in an exclusive interview, we go head-to-head -head with the man in the eye of the storm. This is the Robert Kilroy Silk interview. Every morning for 18 years, The Kilroy Show has been a hit, with its audience attracted by its acerbic and confrontational host. He's not the typical TV celebrity. In fact, he was once tipped to be a future Prime Minister. Like any politician, I want to be Prime Minister, of course. But Robert Kilroy Silk turned his back on politics for a new life as a television presenter. 18 years on, and Kilroy Silk has enjoyed huge success with his morning show. But last week, an article he wrote in the Sunday Express caused outrage among Muslim groups, and it put his whole career on the line. Let's take a look at the original article that caused these problems. You say, should we admire them for being suicide bombers, limb amputators, repressors of women? Is that fair comment? You stand by that, do you? Of course. We, we should not admire people who uh, are suicide bombers, who are women repressors, who are limb amputators. You don't think that in ha, one ha, ha, sweeping Trevor, stroke... On, Tran, Trevor, hang on. Is there anyone anywhere who would stand up and defend anyone who dares does any one of those three acts, then if they do, that's the person we ought to be condemning. The per people we ought to be condemning are the people who carry out those evil actions, not the person who is drawing attention to them and saying they should not be tolerated in a civilised, tolerant world. So there are 200 million Arabs across the world, and in one sweeping generalisation, you've condemned them all, and you're happy for that. But you haven't listened to what I said, Trevor, because I didn't say that. And I never said it just, and I never said it in, in the column, not once. I talked about Arab reg regimes, Arab states, Arab countries, people who do that. I never said all that. But that would be really... But you, you didn't make you know, that I, distinction, I, did you? Well, you, you said, I, well, you said, said well, look, the, the quote is here. You said, should we admire them for being suicide bombers, limb amputators, that, that repressors of women? That clearly refers to those who are suicide bombers. That clearly refers to those who are women uh, uh, oppressors. It's not saying, because I would be uh, foolish and stupid and ignorant to a degree. I might be all of those things but not to that degree. Let's Clearly go. I know that, that, that you can't condemn 200 million Ar Arabs, nor would I want to. Let's take another quote. You say, the Arab countries are not exactly shining examples of civilization, They're are not, they? are they? Apart from the oil which was discovered and is produced for and paid by the West, what do they contribute? Can you think of anything? Anything really useful? Anything really valuable? Something we really need, could not do without? No, nor can I. You stand by that, do you? Yes, I do. Uh, but, I, but, but, but perhaps I ought to elaborate what I actually meant. So and this is the, the Arab, Arab countries. Now you've asked, me the country, you've, asked me, you've asked me the question, let me answer it. First of all, you can't point to one today that is a shining example of civilization. There isn't a single democratic Arab state. The nearest is, is, is Egypt, and it has some votes, but it is not a democratic state, and it does not have equal right for all of its citizens. They've contributed nothing, at, nothing, nothing useful, useful yeah, no, nothing valuable, to, they, nothing two, we really need. Two questions. One was about uh, civilization. The second was about contribution. I was talking, of course, perhaps the co I didn't make that clear, and, and that's, a, that's a problem, because people can use that against me. I wasn't talking about the entire 
Arab history, of course. I do know about medicine, I do know about algebra, I do know about language, but what I'm talking about, Arab states today. And very few of them can contribute much to the uh, economic benefit of the rest of the world other than of oil. Last week he called them suicide bombers, limb amputators and women repressors. Tonight the TV... The article had been published by mistake. It had been first printed last April and had caused little fuss. This time the reaction was instant. Muslim organizations were outraged by what they regarded as a smear on the integrity and values of all Arabs. This is clearly, in my view, incitement to racial hatred, and I had no hesitation in referring it to the police. Tell me how you learned there was such a huge row about this. I had come back from burying my mother. At a funeral on Wednesday, we've been in Wales and we had all our telephones off and we came back on Thursday night and there were messages on the answer phone and we came back thinking we'd had a very difficult, stressful day, we could now relax and the roof fell in. You stand by what you said, don't you? I stand by the way of what I said in the manner in which I just explained. And when you talk about the possibility of making an apology, in fact you're balancing that against your right as an individual to freedom of speech, and it's not really an apology at all, are you? You're championing freedom of speech. No. You stand by what you say. No, 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 no apology no, is necessary. No, no, no. I don't stand. I, I, I don't wish to offend anyone. I made that quite clear. I did not say. But you have offended them. Well, then I'm very sorry for that. But uh, when, let, you, when let, you say let, you make that apology, let, 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 let me, you let also me, defend at the same time your finish. right to freedom of speech. Let, it's it's let, a half-hearted apology, I, I, isn't no, it? No, 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 it isn't. I'll go on to that. I, I, I do apologise for offending anyone, and I'm sorry about that. I didn't intend to gratuitously offend anyone or upset anyone. Well, I don't do that. Why would I? And I only told the truth. And I was telling the truth. Amnesty International has produced numerous reports on the repressive regi regimes, uh, not least, of Saudi Arabia. That's the truth. I, I think we should do something about those repressive re regimes, particularly in the way they treat women. I think it is appalling. And we should draw attention to that and we should do something about it. You and don't that believe is, that freedom that of speech wrong. has its limitations? I actually do believe that we should be able to say things what we like. Now, I know that is not now the law. Do you believe and that I, freedom I, of speech I, has I, any I, limitations I, at all? I, and I accept the limit. Well, I, I, I'm do, telling do you, do you I believe that freedom of speech has any limitations at all? I accept the limitations of the law. Parliament, in its wisdom, has passed laws about, about things that may be, be considered racist and things that might be incitement to racial hatred. I agree with those laws and I abide by them. And you think nothing you have said might incite people to think differently about Arabs? Well, you think what you said was it, absolutely, it, it, scrupulously I, fair? I, I, think I do want them to think about repressive regimes. And what no, but I'm asking about. you the question. No, no, no. Do you think what you said was absolutely and scrupulously fair? Uh, I, about the regimes, about the treatment of people, yes. Do you have any perception? You asked me the question, um, has it changed people's perceptions? I gave you the evidence. I've done 178 shows. Nobody in the, this was published in April, remember? I haven't seen anybody in the street who have said, I'm being incited by what Kilroy Silk said to go and beat up Arabs. That hasn't happened. So, so, you, so there's the evidence, but that's the evidence. Yeah. Robert Kilroy Silk, one of the stars of daytime TV, has been suspended by... On Friday, the BBC suspended the Kilroy show. Its host was under investigation. I understand the BBC's problem. Of course I do. They have this article which has caused a lot of controversy and they think it may have in some way undermined, damaged my impartiality and my ability to deal with people properly and fairly on the Kilroy programme. Well, has it? The column, the original one, was published in April. Almost a year ago, not one single person has complained to me. The Express, apparently, Sunday Express, had two letters. I had many in support. Do you think they overreacted? I, th I would have re preferred them to have reacted differently. As I said to them, I would have liked to think that given that I've done the Kilroy program for 18 years, I would have hoped they'd have um, just kept the program going and dealt with the criticisms. Do you think they reacted differently because of this curious post-Hutton atmosphere. Yeah, and that's what I said to him, I understand. And obviously, it's an extremely difficult time for the BBC. It's a difficult time because of the Hutton report coming out, which may be critical of them. And I understand that. For them, this has come at a very, very bad time. But I would have hoped that they would, I would have said, yeah, OK, he's a real prat for doing this, but he's given 18 years of amazing service, day after day, and he's written that column, which we've known about, how can we solve this? 
that's what I and I would have tried to look forward. And hopefully, that is what they're doing. So you think the show will, be soon, will soon be back on the air? No, I don't think that. I hope that. You don't think in any way that what you have said touches or encroaches on your impartiality as a host of your programme. You don't believe that at all? No. no. As, I, no as I've explained to you, the evidence of it. People, I have been the kind of person I am since I entered politics in 1974. I went to the BBC. They knew. They hired me. They didn't hire me as Mr Bland. They hired me as Robert Kilroy's silk. Someone who, as it said at the time, can talk to anyone on equal terms and express a range, a, a point of view on a range of so That's who they hired. But they also know that I am fair. And I have always been fair, scrupulously fair. That's why I believe in freedom of speech, because I want the tyrannical Arab to make his case. I want the suicide bomber to make his case. That's what I want. I want him to make his case, not be a suicide bomber. I want him to argue his point of view firmly, strongly. I love disputations and arguments. That's why I love doing Kilroy. Good evening. Tonight's ITV Weekend News headlines. The TV presenter Robert Kilroy Silk has come out fighting. Over the last few days, there's been much speculation over whether Robert Kilroy Silk can come back or whether his show and perhaps his career are doomed. The papers and the commentators seem to have made up their minds. You've gone too far, haven't you? I don't think so. I can understand the way they feel, and I regret that I've caused any offence. I didn't intend to. Why do you think people were so offended by what you did? But, but you see, who was offended? You serious? Yes. The people who were offended was the Mo Muslim Council. And we've been here before. Uh, the Muslim Council is very good at uh, raising issues and making sure that it organises a lot of people to write in and do emails and all the rest of it. Um, I've had it before. But I you don't really so understand I, why I, the offence came about, though, do you? Yes, you have if no people... understanding at all of why people might have been offended because the right is on your side, you stated the facts, and you're rather puzzled by all this, um, all this, all this criticism. No, I'm not puzzled by it. I think it's expected uh, because I think a lot of it is manufactured. I think a lot of it is. It's manufactured. Yeah, uh, yeah I think a lot of it is getting yeah. on bandwagons. Uh, a lot of people don't like me. I accept that, and uh, this is a good opportunity. So you seriously think that it's because they don't like you? No, no, I didn't say that. It. I said that will be, there will be some people who have axe to grind. Right. Um, of course there is. There, there always is in, a, in occasions like this. Um, but yes, I understand that people who thought that I was condemning all Arabs would be offended. And I wasn't condemning all Arabs, and I'm sorry if they were offended. Yes, I am repentant for that, but I am not repentant for where I told the truth. Let and me put and, another and, point and, and if, if I am to be vilified and put in the stocks and pilloried for telling the truth, then there is something very seriously wrong here, isn't there? You can't pillory me, you can't castigate me. For telling me, the truth. You can't uh, vilify me for saying there are some evil dictatorial Arab states, because there are. You cannot condemn me, yes you can, but you cannot cut off my head for saying that some Arab countries treat women abominably, because they do. And you stand at, by what you say? At all times. You stand by what you say. Say what we mean, and mean what we say. And that is what I try to do. And on the occasions I've cited to you, that is what I did. And do you or anyone else want me to say, oh no, I told the truth, and I'm sorry for telling the truth. I shouldn't have done that. No, I can't do that, Trevor, and nobody... If I am made to do that, the people who are on my show who are already afraid of being able to say what they want to say without offence will never feel they can speak about politics or political issues or things that deeply concern them again, and that would be wrong. Today, the Daily Express newspaper launched a campaign to put Kilroy back on the box. They claimed that 97% of their readers backed him, but the BBC are continuing to investigate, and his future remains in the balance. If I can summarize your position, it's this. You apologize if you caused any offense, but you stand by your right to say what you think is the fact, and you will go on doing that. Oh, absolutely. 
And do you think that an Arab person or a Muslim person coming onto your program will feel absolutely confident that he can expect total fairness from you despite what you have written? Absolutely. Robert Kilroy Silk, thank you. Thank you. Robert Kilroy Silk speaking to me at his home yesterday. The Muslim Council of Britain told us today that they thought Robert Kilroy Silk's comments did incite racial hatred and that they had caused genuine and widespread outrage to all right-thinking people in this country and throughout the Arab and Muslim world. And the BBC has now suspended further recordings of the Kilroy program. Coming up after the break, tonight investigates how safe is salmon? Yesterday I proffered some farm salmon to my cat. My cat indeed. So maybe the cat knows something we don't. It's bigger, it's better. The superb new five-star extension is now open at Peterborough Greyhounds. Enjoy top table service at the new Raceview restaurant. A thousand seats with a view of the track or have a drink and a snack in the licensed bars. Whether it's having fun with your friends or a special event, it's a great night out. Entertaining clients or staff, the new corporate suites are just the ticket. Ask about our group discounts for parties and special events. Peterborough Greyhounds every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday. My boy got beaten to death out there. And everyone around here knows who did it. No, sorry, I, we not saw nothing. We saw nothing! What is wrong with you people? We have to shame people into coming forward and telling us what they saw. Just tell me we can do this together. A drama premiere, Wall of Silence, tonight at 9, ITV1. Welcome back. Only eat salmon six times a year. That's the devastating new warning from a report into the safety of Scottish farmed salmon. 18 months ago, this program produced its own shocking report into farmed salmon. And now the reporter of that film, Jonathan Maitland, goes back to find out, is salmon safe for your family to eat? It was back in 2002 when we first reported on farmed salmon. We looked into fears about its safety. Food scares such as BSE and foot and mouth mean we now eat more salmon than ever before. 35 million fish every year in fact. So, it's a very big business indeed. But is salmon fit to eat? This is the image the salmon industry would like us to have. Healthy salmon leaping through crystal clear waters. But the wild free swimming variety could never satisfy the huge appetite that we have in this country. This is the reality, huge pens that can hold up to 50,000 fish with just a few gallons each to swim in, so not much leaping here. Salmon are crammed in cages at stocking densities equivalent to battery farm chickens. Uh, they have the equivalent water space as a bathtub of water. So you've got a migratory species, uh, the wild salmon, the king of fish, who swims 5,000 miles across the open ocean, crammed in a cage. But it wasn't just a case of overcrowding. I also discovered an industry that used artificial dyes so that the consumer who bought farm salmon got fish that had the healthy pink colour of its wild cousins. Right, that was two years ago and the salmon industry probably thought things couldn't get any worse but they just have because last week a group of American scientists published this report and it says that Scottish farm salmon has the highest level of contamination to be found anywhere in the world. And it also says that if we eat too much of the stuff, and by that they meant more than six portions like this a year, then we run an increased risk of getting cancer. Well, I don't eat farm salmon. I don't let my family eat farm salmon. And I don't let my customers eat farm salmon. I, I do believe the amount of chemicals used in the farming of salmon through the feed or whatever, through the antibiotics, I think is damaging our immune systems. The trouble is nobody really knew how we were achieving this result at such cheap prices. And the results of that are, are, are pollution of the environment and possibly pollution of our bodies. Next time you order salmon in a restaurant, be careful. It's not what's on the menu that's important, it's what's not. A typical piece of Scottish farm salmon was found to contain dieldrin, lindane, dioxins and PCBs, some of the most dangerous cancer-causing chemicals around. 
But I feel that the presence of these compounds, no matter in how small a quali quantity, is a cause for concern. But some of these compounds are there in terms of less than a, a millionth of a gram. I mean, they are barely noticeable. Why should we be concerned about something that, that actually barely exists? Well, it, they certainly exist because they certainly can be measured. And one has to ask oneself, what is the safe level of a carcinogen? I would feel that a carcinogen is either present or it's absent. If it's present, then there is a cause for concern. It should not be in our foodstuff, quite simply. But where's this problem come from? Well, it's quite simple. The food that is fed in pellets to farmed salmon is made from small fish from the bottom of the North Atlantic, which happens to be, well, fairly contaminated. So, contaminated fish are fed to salmon and we eat the salmon. It's called the food chain. But the industry says it's trying to feed their salmon better food now. A number of changes have already been made to feed formulation and raw materials that go into salmon diets. We're now using uh, significant proportions of things like high quality soya protein and vegetable oil, as well as sourcing fish meal and fish oil from very clean areas throughout the world to make sure that the consumer gets a high quality food that's actually very good for them. So what effect has the recent scare had on those doing their shopping today? I think I had concerns before this came out actually and I always prefer to buy organically if possible so it would probably put me off buying it I think until I knew a bit more. I'd probably be trying to eat more organic salmon if that would like, keep me safer. Oh, I'm not particularly worried to be honest I think but the media blows a lot of things out of proportion and I like my salmon, I'll have it once a week and I'll continue to do that. I'll buy it less often for sure. Um, maybe go for the, uh, the fresh stuff rather than farm salmon. But while confidence in salmon appeared low in the shoppers we spoke to this morning, all the major supermarkets told us that it had been business as usual with no drop in sales. So what do our experts think? It's a wake-up call to the Scottish farming industry. They've got to get their act together and they've got to prove to us they're squeaky clean and they're not damaging the environment and they're certainly not damaging our health. Well, it's not our job to tell people how many portions of salmon they should, they should eat. That's the Food Standards Agency's job. Their advice is that people should be eating two portions of fish a week. One of these portions of fish should be an oily fish, such as uh, Scottish salmon. It's too early to say what the long-term effects of all this will be for the salmon industry, but once again, a food safety scare means that British consumers are caught right in the middle and not sure who or what to believe. Jonathan Maitland reporting on the crisis engulfing the salmon industry. Coming up on Friday's edition of Tonight, it's the day that Michael Jackson appears in court on a string of child abuse charges. We'll be live at the court in California with the full story of how the king of pop ended up in the dog. That's on Friday night at 8 o'clock. But that's all we have time for this evening. So from all of us here, goodbye and thank you for joining us. Poor old Rita. She has no idea of the amount of trouble that's brewing in our second Coronation Street coming up next tonight and then compelling drama based on a recent true story. James Nesbitt in our premiere, Wall of Silence at 9.